Exorcist Believer is coming out later this week, I thought that it was the perfect opportunity for me to sit down and give you guys all of my thoughts on the classic Exorcist. If you haven't seen The Exorcist, I highly recommend watching the movie first and then coming back to today's video because I'm just gonna be spoiling the movie left and right, so I wanna make sure that you guys don't get spoiled if you do wanna watch the movie. But for those of you who don't care about spoilers or have already seen the movie, I hope you enjoyed today's review. So first off, I think it's only fitting that we talk about the characters in this movie because the characters, in my opinion, are one of the strongest points of this movie. So the first character that I obviously wanna talk about is the girl who's getting possessed, and that's Reagan. I just wanna say that I give so many props to Linda Blair for this performance because I think it's really great, and that goes for all of the performances in this movie. I think they're both very believable, very authentic, and I think all of the four main characters are sort of like a different pillar in the story which I think is really interesting and this movie uses this innocent child that we see at the beginning of the movie as the vessel of evil which leads to a lot of uncomfortable scenes on this latest rewatch I realized how fast things happen in this movie and this movie don't get me wrong is slow and we'll talk about the pacing and the slowness in a little bit but I actually didn't really like register to me in the in in all of my watches how little we get of normal Reagan. We know when her birthday's coming up. There's a Ouija board scene, and then one of the scenes after she's already like started to get possessed. And it's really quick that it happens. And I almost wish that we could have had a little bit more of normal Reagan. I will say that out of all of these characters, I think she's the one that's almost like the least developed. I've always loved her mother's character in the story because she almost feels like the sense of reason or like and is the one that's adding the human element to the story in my opinion. Because one of my favorite things that this movie does is that she doesn't assume that she's possessed from the get-go. Like she fully goes to many doctors, she tries to figure out what's wrong with her, does a bunch of tests, which by the way, those testing sequences of all the like needles and the exam rooms, like that in itself is horrifying, probably scarier than the actual exorcism. She feels like a really authentic human being that I can believe she's actually feeling these things and I can believe she's fearful of these things and she just feels very realistic in this supernatural and paranormal story and I've always loved her because of that. A lot of the times the emotional things that I feel for Reagan are mostly because of her mother and the way she's reacting to things. But my favorite character and I think the best character in this movie and I think a lot of us maybe can agree with this is Father Karras. I was just thinking how much of this story is his because so much of the conversations about good versus evil and faith and things like that all sort of relate to his character personally and what he's going through and he's sort of going against his own character the entire time. He's a priest but he literally tells one of his friends that he thinks he has lost his faith. So having a priest that lo is losing his faith but at the same time has to believe in good in order to perform this exorcism, it just makes a lot of interesting character development the entire time because you sort of don't know where his character is going to end and I really like how him battling this demon is sort of like battling his own inner demon with what happened with his mother and how um, his mother passed away. He's sort of feeling the guilt because of that and sort of how he should have been there for her, should have done more to help her. So I always love situations like that where there's a physical demon being fought, they're also fighting an internal battle. He's just the most compelling character in the story and the way his story ends is also so great. I remember the first time I watched it and he jumped out that window, I like screamed because I was like, no way. And I just want to say that I, I just love that scene because he's almost like metaphorically and actually taking a leap of faith. He doesn't know if killing himself is going to actually solve this and save Reagan, but it does. It's such like a big movie moment where as an audience member, you're sort of like, okay, where do we go from here? Like what happens now? Because the craziest thing just happened. And I've always felt that that moment is so good that the movie itself couldn't like live up to that in the ending. It's almost like if all the characters literally forgot what happened, like Reagan obviously has no idea what happened, but like her mother and everybody's being so chill about everything, which I understand is an indication that like they just want to move on, they don't want to talk about this traumatic event that just happened, but I don't know, I always just wish that there was like something else in the end. And it also sort of leaves off with this ambiguity that's like, you don't actually know if the evil ended or not because you have that close-up of Reagan looking um at the other priest's neck. So I've always kind of interpreted that as like she's planning on killing him or something. I'm curious what you guys think about the actual ending of the movie because I've always thought I'm like, I feel like I should be getting something else here and I'm just not. But 
yeah, Father Karras, best character. Honestly, I think one of the best characters in horror movies. I just think he's so good. And, and also, Jason Miller's performance was phenomenal. A lot of the times, he doesn't even have to say anything and, like, I know what he's feeling. And then the other priest, Father Marin, I think the most important thing that happens with his character is the opening of the movie. The first time I ever watched this movie, I did not like the opening because I thought it did not connect with absolutely anything. And now the more i've watched it the more i realize that the opening is just so eerie that like i can't even begin to explain it it's a mix of the score the cinematography the way it's edited that it sort of just makes you feel like there is evil everywhere in the scene in the beginning we see like the demon statue face and that scene to me is so scary and i don't even know why because it's such a simple scene of just showing the statue but it almost is like you're looking straight at evil and you can't like look away in general something that i really like that this movie does is that there's like these little like demon motifs is kind of how i'll call them and moments like that are some of the scariest moments in this movie i've always been confused about this i've said it previously on this channel before when i've talked about the exorcist but i'm always so confused as to what actually possessed reagan because Sometimes when I watch the movie, I'm like, is it something to do with the Ouija board that she pulls out? Or is it like that statue thing that was at the beginning with Father Marin? So it's something that's unclear to me. I like to know why things happen. And I, it could just be something where it's like, hey, evil's happening. Like, you don't need a reason. But I'm just curious. Like, I just fully want to know, like, what possessed her. Because if it was the Ouija board, like, where did that come from? Because that moment also felt kind of random um so yeah i don't know let me know what you guys think down below also something that i really noticed on this recent rewatch was sort of the documentary style filmmaking that is used here and what i mean by that is that there's not a lot of cuts sometimes and a lot of sequences are like drawn out and bigger there's a lot of scenes where like the camera lingers on and we're like focused on things for a really long time sort of as it's like explaining something to us without there being any words and with that being said one of my favorite things about this movie is the editing when i've seen a movie so many times i really like to focus on the way it's cut and the way it's edited i actually am a fan of the pacing of this movie because it helps the tension build gradually and it keeps the audience in a state of unease throughout the entire time i feel like the middle of the movie is the one that's the slowest and might bring it down a little bit and i feel like i really like that the editor did that and kept the pacing this way because it sort of feels like everything is lingering and you sort of like want it to end but it's not ending and it just keeps going and lingering and lingering and i don't know i personally really like that because in a way it, it sort of mimics what what it might feel like for this family for this mother and, and her daughter it really does add to the whole fearful factor and tries to sort of put you in the shoes of the characters and another thing that this movie does is using a lot of parallel editing especially during the exorcism scenes where they they're showing multiple things at once so for example we're seeing things that aren't actually there we're seeing some things through the perspective of father Karras. we're seeing some things that are actually happening and i think the parallel editing just in general but especially in this movie and in those sequences works a lot to evoke a sense of psychological struggle and psychological fear as well as physical fear and what's actually happening and i also really like when editing switches perspectives from what somebody is seeing in their mind and then what's actually happening and also i do want to say that in these fast moments i like that they weren't overdone and i think by spreading these little moments out it didn't tire the audience out either i think the filmmakers did a great job with this movie and if you guys haven't seen the extra I think you should definitely watch it because especially if you're a horror fan I think this is like one of those staple horror movies that also inspired a lot of horror movies to come in later years even today that's all for today's review thank you all so much for watching and the next time you guys should probably see a video from me I will have already seen the exorcist believer make sure to watch the exorcist believer this weekend when it comes out and then come to my channel and watch all the videos that I'll have on that I just I'm hoping the movie's good because as you can tell I'm a fan of the original exorcist so let's hope it's at least a watchable movie that's all we can hope for but thank you all so much for watching today's 31 nights of horror video and I'll make sure to see you all in the next one bye everyone